Hello and welcome to how to create a template in Authentisign. When you log into Authentisign, you're going to see on your main screen this template option right here. Alternatively, you can also come over here to where these three cogs are and click on these and it will take you into this section that will also allow you to go to transaction templates and select here to create them. So you can access them either way, either from your dashboard on the main screen or from your settings options. Okay, so I'm going to select create template right here. And what that's going to do is going to take me into my template section. Now I have quite a few templates built already, but you might not currently have any in this system. There are actually two different ways to create templates and I'm going to show you both options. The first one is to build one from scratch, just like we're doing now. So what I'm going to do is come over here to where it says add and I'm going to click on that plus sign. Now I'm going to name the template, whatever it is that I'm creating. So let's say that we're going to create a listing package. Um, and I'm going to say freehold residential. Make sure you explain it in a way for the name that makes sense so that when you're looking at your list of templates when we're creating the transaction kits that you can easily identify which template you want to use. Now I'm going to select type next and I'm going to come down here and go to residential listing and if you want you can put in a description but it's really not that necessary unless you have multiple types with different clauses or something then you might want to describe them or at least state the clauses so that you're aware of which is which um, and then I'm going to hit save. So once I'm in the section where I have my package name here, one of the first things you want to do is set up your contacts in your template kit. So when I drop down on contacts, I'm going to come right over here to the right where it says add a contact. And now what I want to do is add an existing contact because I want to add myself and I want to add the brokerage so I don't have to continually add them into my documents when I'm filling them out down the road. So what I can do here is scroll through uh, all of the contacts that I have in my system and I can select um, which one I want. So for example, I have one where I'm listed as a salesperson and one where I'm listed as brokerage. So I want the salesperson information here. So I'm gonna select this one and then I'm gonna keep scrolling down and I'm gonna see what else I have in here. I may or may not have Keller Williams, I don't. So what I'm gonna do is add myself. I'm gonna go through here to make sure that it's clear that I'm adding myself in the right way. So I'm gonna say that as a because I'm doing a listing template, I'm going to list myself as the listing salesperson so that my information gets populated in all of the right areas. So once I've added in the information regarding the brokerage, I'm just going to go to these identifiers and this address and make sure that everything here is accurate as well um, and add my cell phone if I want to. Once I'm done inputting all of the details, I'm just going to hit save and that's going to create the transaction contact. And now I'm going to sit here under the contact list. So I also want to add the brokerage because I don't have them in here yet. So I'm going to come over here to add contact and I'm going to create a new contact. And that's going to take me to this page automatically. And I'm just going to come down here, select listing brokerage. And then down at the bottom, I am going to type in Keller Williams Realty Centers and make sure that it's designated to the office that you're registered to, whether it's Wellington Street or it's um, or it's New Market or it's Keswick. So I'm going to go there and then I'm going to trip over here to address and I'm going to put in the information. So I know that I'm registered at the Aurora office, so I'm going to make sure that I have the Wellington Street information. That Once you're done, you're just going to hit save. And now you're going to see under my contacts that I have Kelly Williams as the listing brokerage and myself as the listing salesperson. Once I'm done adding the contacts that I would standardly use, which is usually just yourself in the brokerage, the next step is documents and folders. This is where I can upload my Schedule B, my Schedule C, my COVID forms, any of that sort of stuff, um, as long as it's in the system. And so what I'm going to do is just go over here and go to add a document. Now I can drag and drop the files from my computer here, or I can upload them from um, documents if I have them in a document box. I can import them from like iCloud or uh, Dropbox, um, or I can put them in from an email. I'm just going to select drag and drop because I have them saved on my computer. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to select the ones that I want. So I want the Schedule B, um, and I want my, my COVID documents as well. So I'm going to select these guys 
and I'm going to hit open. Now this is going to attach these documents to the automatically to this transaction template. So every time I select this template, these documents are going to exist here. Okay. The next thing we're going to go do is add the forms that are required for your template. So right now there are no forms in this template. I'm going to select the plus sign on the right hand side. And that's going to allow me to go through and choose the forms that I know I need for a residential listing. So this is going to populate. You notice this list has gotten really long. It used to just be a couple of options. So this is because not only have they blended the Toronto Real Estate Board, but they've blended web forms. So now we have our Keller Williams Realty Centers forms here, as well as the Ontario Residential Tenancy Agreement, as well as FinTrack, and then all of the different boards that we're now merged with. So first I'm going to go through my Keller Williams Realty Center forms um, and thank goodness web forms has now merged fully with AuthentiSign so we actually have access to all of the forms regardless of which brokerage office we're registered at and I'm going to add in all of my listing forms that are required for this type of transaction. So my open house keys lockbox, I'm going to just check that off right here. My listing sheet, I'm going to check that off. If you use the personal service guarantee, you can do that. Um, reporting conditional, I'm going to check because I will need that if once my listing is sold conditional. Reporting firm, I'm going to check that as well. Our schedule B, I'm going to check that. If you have any side agreements, and I'm also going to add in my TIS form here as well. So you're going to see I already have six forms just from the Keller Williams form. So I'm going to select add in the top right hand corner. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to click add forms again. Um, and you didn't have to click add yet. You could have continued searching. I just like to do it separately because it, it keeps it more clear for me on what I have and haven't added. And the next step I'm going to go to here is my FinTrack. So I'm just going to select FinTrack down here and I'm going to choose the forms that I need. So I need my individual identification information record. I know that I need that. Um, and then I'm going to need to add a second one most likely because of the fact that usually we have more than one person on title. So for now, I'm going to add that one in and then I can come back in later and I can add a second one. Then what I'm going to do is just close this folder, go back to the individual forms at the top, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to basically the bottom where the Toronto board forms are. And I'm going to select the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. That's going to open me up to all of my Toronto based documents. So from here, I can type in the form numbers or I can just start typing in the names of the forms. I know that I need my listing agreement. So I'm going to start typing in listing and it will take a second, but it will auto populate all of the different forms. So I know that I'm looking for my Ontario listing agreement, seller representation, authority to offer for sale. So I can just select right here and add that form. Now I know I also need my MLS data sheet, so I'm going to be adding that one in as well. And it will, again, it will auto populate into what I need. So MLS property commercial, MLS property information form residential. Make sure you're selecting the right board because even though we selected Toronto, when you type it this way, it does auto populate. So you want to scroll down again, down towards the very bottom and find the Toronto MLS data information form freehold sale. So I'm going to be selecting that form. Um, and then I'm just going to run through and add all of the additional forms that I need for that for that transaction kit. Um, and once I'm done, I'm going to hit add. And those forms are going to populate into the form section as well. So now when I click on my form section, you can see I have quite a few different forms here. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Once, once I have them all in, I can actually go in and start editing some of these forms. So that's one of the great things about the transaction template. If I wanted to, I could come into the listing sheet, for example, I could just click on it, see how it highlights and open it up. And I could start editing this document in here. So it, the pre-populated information that would be on here. So for example, my own name. Um, I could automatically fill out if I always want to be part of the group page, I could select the yes. Um, I obviously don't know all of this information, but I could know a lot of it. Um, for example, when I want to get my communications, I could select these immediately. Um, I could check off I know what paperwork I need and that I have if I have any additional notes or things like that. And when I'm done with this form, I can six, I can simply just come to transaction forms here at the top. And then I can go through and I can select the next form and the next form and so on. So for example, my listing agreement, 
I could choose that one. And I could just go in to verify that all of our office information is on here and all of my information, my name, all of that is also showing up. And if it's not, I can start typing it in. Um, I don't know the seller's name or the property information name yet, um, but if I continue to scroll down, I know that I usually charge my 5%. I know that it's 2.5% to the cooperating brokerage. Um, I know that my holdover days is gonna be 90 and so on and so forth. And I can continue to just go through here and auto-populate that information. Once it's done, it'll automatically save so you don't have to worry about that. And then every time you open your template to use it when you're creating a tech transaction kit for a deal or a listing, that information will already be there. So for example, I could type my, my name here and then I won't have to do that next time and same up here. Now I'm just gonna keep going through and I can then go to my MLS data form and I can do the same thing. The next thing, what I wanna do here is just make sure that I have it filled out as much as possible to save myself as much time on the back end. So one of the things with this is when you are doing a buyer template, for example, a buyer kit, and you have your agreement of purchase and sale as a form, what I would recommend is that you, t you put your clauses directly into the template. So you're gonna to wanna to create a list of clauses for, um, for like a rural property, for a condo, for a uh, residential freehold, all that sort of stuff. Um, and not even create them, just find the forms that Christina's already made us and copy and paste those clauses directly into the Schedule A on your buyer, on your agreement of purchase and sale in your buyer template so that when you go ahead and use those templates in your transaction kit, those clauses will actually be pre-populated for you and you won't have to worry about doing it. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just going to save this quickly just to make sure. It should auto save, but I'm a little bit anal about that. And then I'm gonna hit exit. Now, that's basically the entire process of creating a template. If you are on a team, you could add it to your team sharing file. Um, but that's really the entire process. Once you're done, that kit will then exist within your transaction template files and you can use it when you're applying it to a transaction kit which I will show you in the next video. So um, just quickly in order to show you how to add the clauses into a buyer template, I'm just going to go back out of this one over here. I'm going to go to my cogs and I'm going to go to my transaction templates here and I can see all of my pre-existing so for example buyer freehold package I know that I've already built this I've gone through the process I've added all the forms so the next thing I want to do is make sure I add my clauses in so I'm going to go to my agreement of purchase and sale I'm going to open that form up and what you're going to do is just scroll right to page five where page six and now again, because our, our offices, the, the web forms and uh, AuthentiSign have merged, this gives us the opportunity now to come here, select the box first or it won't work. Make sure that it's highlighted. See how there's this green box? And I'm gonna hit clauses. And now it's gonna allow me to search all of my clauses. So what I'm gonna see is personal clauses, office clauses, and system clauses. I'm gonna choose office clauses right now, and I'm gonna to go to my consolidated common clauses forms that Christine made for us. Now I know that this is a residential purpose, so I'm gonna select my A1 residential, and I'm gonna select my A6 NV, which is all of my uh, representations and warranties. And then I'm just gonna simply come back up to the top and hit okay, and now, um, it's going to say you can't fit them all on one page. You want to add an additional page. Yes, I do. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a second Schedule A page to your kit. We're going to go all the way back to that section and make sure that everything fits. So an indicator that everything doesn't fit is when you have this gray bar on the right-hand side because when you go to email or print this, it's not going to have the ability to scroll. So that's not going to show up. So there's two things you can do here. You can come, simply come up here to where it says fonts and select the style and choose a different style that will actually decrease the size of your font, which also looks better, so I tend to do that anyway. Um, or you could also um, cut, cut from the first page and paste into the second page. That's another option. And what you're gonna notice is that this last clause doesn't quite fit, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut this 
and just paste it right here because I have the room. And now all of my clauses are outlined. They're already in my offer, in my template, and I can just save this template. And anytime that I now choose to use this buyer template in my system when I'm creating a transaction kit, my clauses will already be there. So I can just come in and add or remove the clauses that don't make sense to me and then my and add in my, con my buyer's information and dates and all that stuff, and my offer is done. So not only... Um, does it make your life a lot easier, but it makes the process of creating a transaction kit and actually putting an offer together way faster. So that's it. Once you're done, you've created your template, you're just going to save it and you can go back to your dashboard and that's all there is to it. So that's how you create a template within Authentisign and Webforms. I hope that was helpful and have a great day.